And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas here this morning with Heather Craig from Love the Children Ministries. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Susie. I'm doing well. How are you? Great. Thank you. And let's go back. How many years now? Well, this is year 12. Wow. And All right, so 12 years ago, yes. you were still a student in college. I was just beginning as a student in college. It was my freshman year at Malone. And I can remember coming into your office that year because somebody said, you need to go talk to Susie about this crazy idea you have. <laughs> and now 12 years later, thousands of kids later, we're still here and still growing strong and growing every year. Well, for anyone who this is a new concept for, let's go back. Love the Children Ministries. You you really had a heart at the beginning for children to get Christmas presents if they somehow had fallen through the cracks. There are other really wonderful organizations that provide for help and assistance with families at Christmas time. Mm-hmm. But there still might be those families that fall through the cracks for whatever reason. You tell us. Tell us about that. Yeah, we uh, when we started out, it was very small. We did 90 kids the first year, and we worked with organizations like Stark Metropolitan Housing, the YWCA, uh, different transitional housing facilities, different preschool facilities. And it was really hard on some of the families. Either they missed deadlines or they simply made too much money, which is something that's really hard when you make too much money but you still can't provide for your kids in the way that you want to, to make sure that they have a good Christmas. And so we began to set out to do exactly that, to try to fill that gap and to try to be there to meet the needs of children that uh, just really deserve to have a great Christmas. And we're not talking about exorbitant, um, when you say families that made too much money, these are families that are able to make ends meet, able to put food on the table, but not have enough to buy a gift in addition. And we're not talking about an Xbox gift. Yes. We're looking at families that uh, are just barely, maybe even as little as $1,000 above the poverty line Mm -hmm. with annual income. Mm -hmm. So it's not families that are making, you know, $50,000, $60,000, $70,000 a year as a family. It's it's right around that 30 and even lower mark. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. So first one, you say only 90. I say that's incredible that a freshman in college gets an idea and has 90 children that she's providing presents for at Christmas time. Um, But since then, the transformation has been amazing. Tell us a little bit about the history. Yeah. When we started out, it was it was 90 children and we held we held our event at Crystal Park United Methodist Church in downtown Canton. And we just had it in the sanctuary. The families came in. We had a couple of youth group kids that sang some Christmas carols, and that was it. That was our event. And now, as far as the last seven years, we've held it at Timken Commons at the new uh, Canton McKinley downtown campus, as it's going by this year. And we provide Christmas dinner that is bought by the Canton City Schools Custodial Union and prepared and served by the Cafeteria Workers Union at Canton City Schools. And we provide 300 children and their families with a fully catered Christmas meal, live entertainment. There's been a magic show for the past couple of years that the kids love, and he is coming back this year. And every child gets a personal time with Santa with their siblings where they get to go up and receive their gifts. And all gifts are hand-selected gifts that are specifically bought, purchased with this child in mind based on their age and their interests that's specifically gift-wrapped for them with their name on it, ready to go, and they get those gifts from Santa during the event night. Oh, my goodness. So no one-size-fits-all. It's all personalized for the child. How special. And that's one thing that sets Love the Children apart, I believe, because we really we get to know these kids and we understand what they what they're looking for and we can we can fill that gap. We can meet that need in in a way where just as if somebody knows our name, it means so much. When they walk in and we can say, you know, hi Gabby or hi Justin and they know that we know their names. It helps they wear name tags. But <laughs> <laughs> even in that moment, these children walk in and they get to have a night to not be reminded of any of the struggles that their family may be experiencing. But they get to come in and be celebrated and have a night off mm-hmm. of worries that young children just shouldn't have to worry about. Kind of amazing. All right. Well, tell me, first of all, uh, if someone's listening and they say, I know a family that perhaps maybe there's been a recent job loss or something, they might not be any on anyone else's list. 
um, is it too late for a family to get on your list for Love the Children? That would depend on how quickly the referral came in and how quickly we got information back from them. We try to accept referrals strictly from agencies, but we also keep at least 50 to 60 spots open each year that we accept from referrals that come from just people that hear about our organization or people that are volunteers with our organization. So it really just depends. And going on to our website at lovethechildrenministries.org and shooting us a quick message can usually answer those questions. So that's how you refer someone through the website? Yes. Repeat it again? Uh, lovethechildrenministries.org. Okay, don't forget the ministries in there. Yes. Lovethechildrenministries.org. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, serving 300 families now? 300 children okay. and then their families. Okay, so, so some are siblings. Yes, we get families that are either one child families or all the way up to five or six children children families. So it just depends on the family size, but 300 children. And then we do two adults per family get admitted into have the dinner and enjoy it with their children. So cool. All right. Well, take us from the very beginnings to now. What transformation have you seen? Um, the specific lives of people that you've gotten to interact with? There's been there's been so many. And I think the first one that pops out in my head is is almost a selfish one. But when I started this, I was a brand new Christian, and I had never grown up in a Christian home. And my dad, I suckered him into playing Santa the first year and <laughs> convinced him that he had to do this. And he played Santa, and at that point he was not a Christian. And he had told the pastor that night, I want the joy that I see in her. I want the joy that my daughter has and I know how to get it, and someday I'm going to be ready for it. And I'm not ready now, but when I am, you'll be the first to know. And he told my pastor that he was never to tell me that he spoke those words to him, and my pastor never did. And it wasn't until a year and a half later that I got to be there in the room with my dad as he accepted Christ. Mm. And my mom accepted Christ that same night as well because mm. she was just waiting for her husband to do that because it was just too big of a decision for her to make without her husband. And so after playing Santa the first year, my family now has eternity secured. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that I could get that's more than that. Uh, we have so many families that have incredible stories and incredible moments where families get help one year and the next year they're back to volunteer. We have one family who they actually made decorations for the following year. So they came and then they they enjoyed it so much that they brought back all of these paper snowflakes, boxes and boxes of paper snowflakes that they spent time together as a family making so that we could decorate our space. Wow, wow. Um, and then there's been heartbreaking stories. There's yeah. been stories where I can remember one young man was sitting at the table afterwards and he was watching all of his siblings open all of their gifts, but he wasn't opening his. And he was older, probably around 11 or 12, and his siblings were quite younger. And I asked him if he wanted to open his gift, and he looked at me and he said, Miss Heather, I want to know what it looks like to see a gift under my tree. Oh, my goodness. And he was going to take it home and put it under his tree and at least leave it until Christmas morning and, and open then it open in the it. Morning. Mm. And to think of never having that experience. No, that's that's something that seems impossible in our minds. Yeah. Hard to get your head wrapped around that one. We're talking with Heather Craig. She is the, do you call yourself the founder, executive director? Founder and executive Dream director. Dreamer yes. upper of <laughs> Love the Children Ministries. And uh, yeah, as you say, it has definitely grown by leaps and bounds now since those infancy days 12 years ago 12 years this will be our 12th year of service you've gotten beyond just providing at christmas time you have a yes. backpack program you want to talk about that a little bit yes annually we do our pack the packs event and what that is is we have traditionally in the past adopted one elementary school in canton each year that we provide all of the school supplies for every student in the building and this year we we got the chance to partner up with starbucks and all 11 area starbucks stores all the way from from Maslin all the way up to Akron and Fairlawn and all over this area worked together to collect school supplies that we were able to bless local students with and we were able to do 638 students in two schools this year. Amazing. 
Okay, anyone listening who would like to donate towards this, because I know in January they're going to be needing more supplies um, or to be able to get on your list for the future. Perhaps somebody wants to volunteer at uh, the fun Christmas Day of Love the Children. How does somebody contact you for that? One of the best ways to do that is online. Mm-hmm. They can, again, go to lovethechildrenministries.org, or they can go to facebook.com slash lovethechildrenministries. We have all of our events posted on there. We have wrapping parties. We have shopping sprees. We have different events where we pack the packs for our school supplies and go shopping for the school supplies. So we have a lot of different areas that people can really get involved in. We've got a couple big events coming up this fall, too. We're hosting a great partnership with the, with the Canton Charge and doing Love the Children Night at the Charge, which is a great thing, and people can support in that way. Um, they can buy a ticket to the game and a ticket to the dinner, and all the proceeds past their ticket costs go directly to Love the Children. So there's great opportunities there, and that is all available on our website and online. They can donate online to us. They can send in uh, monetary donations to to the checking account that we have um, at the post office box. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we have different different ways that people can get involved. Well, we're going to get into the the huge thing you're doing with a charge uh, in our second half. But I do want to talk to you, though, about... Um, about volunteer opportunities. What night is the Christmas night this year? This year it falls on December 19th. Okay. And typically volunteers arrive at 4 o'clock down at the Timken Commons, and then we are there for the evening getting everything ready to go. And the night before, we decorate and set everything up. We also do a huge cookie drive where we try to collect around 300 dozen cookies and desserts that we serve at the dinner, but we also prepare boxes of cookies, at least a dozen for every family to take home and enjoy Christmas cookies with their family at home. So we do all that in the decorating on the night before on the 18th. So Christmas cookies, if you're a baker, if you like <laughs> to shop, that's yes. pretty fun to go on the shopping sprees yes. and uh, say somebody, how does that work? Tell me how this looks, what this looks like. Do you go as a group or is somebody given a name and what this child has asked for that they can go purchase on their own? Or exactly how does this work? What we do is for the Christmas activity for the shopping trips, we all meet at Love the Children's downtown campus, and then we carpool out to local stores from there. We shop, and what we'll do is we'll give each person a different kid and say, you can go find an item that is for this child. Here's what they like. Here's our our price range categories. And they will go out and look for an item. Um, With the Pack the Packs, with the school supplies, We do the same thing, except people have the option to purchase those on their own and adopt a child and bring a book bag back with all the supplies inside. So it's a little bit different based on the time of the year. But for our Christmas, we all meet together, head to one store together, and then kind of divide and conquer our list of kids. And they are not using their own money to purchase these. (laughs) No. You have donations there. It's everyone's dream, tearing through a toy store in the toy aisles at Christmas time with someone else's money. It, it doesn't get any better than <laughs> it that. It doesn't get any better than that. That is amazing. And so you're going to be out there anyway in the stores. Why not get in on this? Do you know what night yet is going to be the shopping spree? Yes. Uh, Saturday, November 7th is our first shopping trip. And then Sunday, December 6th is our second shopping trip. Okay. So you can get in on one or both yes. of those. Okay. How about if you're baking cookies? You do that on your own or do you also yes. have a cooking baking night? No. <laughs> Okay. You do that on your own, and then uh, we have a Facebook event and organizational group that takes care of getting all the gifts, I'm um, sorry, all the cookies ready to go and over to the school. Perfect. All right. We're talking with Heather Craig. She is in charge of Love the Children Ministries, and we'll be back with more after these words. I uh, hope you stay with us. You're listening to Our Community.